Yep, yep, to the yep, yep. You already know what time it is, man. It's your girl, POC. Turn your radios up, spread the word, spread the message. You already know how we come in each and every Friday live on 900 AM WRD 96.1 Word Radio. It's your girl, POC, host of Eco Word, bringing you that greener, safer conversation, bringing that environmental justice conversation that's for you and about you. Today is Friday, February the 23rd. You know, we have a jam packed show for you. Yes, you, but we want you to join in on the conversation. You already know you can do that on Facebook. You can always give us a call and make sure that you subscribe to everything we got going on here, especially our newsletter, so you can make sure you stay locked what the the brand new things the 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 swag the gears the tickets the giveaways all that good stuff on WRD Word Family. We love you. So make sure you continue to support, donate, and definitely make sure you become a member of 900 AM WRD today. I want to make sure I put that out there. But we also got a special guest on the line and she's going to start today's show off a little differently. She wanted to make sure she, you know, gave us a little bit of herself before we started our conversation. We got Amberly Choi on the line. Good morning. How you feeling? Hey, good morning, POC. I'm feeling good, ready to go. Um, beautiful Friday. I love that. I'm ready to go. I love that energy. <laughs> Open up the show for us. Sure. Um, I just want to share a little poem that I wrote, um, inspired by a book called Skill in Action, um, Radicalizing Your Yoga Practice to Create a Just World by Michelle Cassandra Johnson. Um, and it's just, I am from statements. Um, is what the poem is made up. So I'll just get, uh, I'll just jump into it. Um, I am from a humble and cramped one bedroom apartment with four people and two dogs fighting for space. I am from thinking I wasn't loved or cared for. I am from sun shining through the windows as I try to hide in the shadows, a child's game. I am from trauma, but also long and joyous summer nights making memories. I am from the gardens that my mother tends. I am from fighting mental illness my whole life, from emotional abuse and unlearning self-hate. I am from Korean ancestors, Irish ancestors, and more who I don't know yet. I am from assimilating into a culture and system I did not help build. I am from wanting to change that system. I am from learning to love me fully without conditions. I am from wanting to share myself with the world and learning how to do that. I am from starlight, from the earth and the ocean, from our air. I am from pure magic and happenstance. I am here and I'm not going anywhere. And that's it. I love that. And and why did you decide to share that with us this morning? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share uh, just a little bit. Of, like, I tend to communicate better through poetry um who I am what I'm feeling um in that kind of way so that's why I just wanted to share that this morning with all of you and all your listeners I appreciate that and before we get started I want to make sure you introduce yourself you know um because we connected through EcoFest you was representing you know the Watershed Alliance and now you know we I feel like we became uh, friends we became friends after that we uh stay connected and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on um EcoWord uh to just hold space and have conversation about you know what it feels like to be in this fight for environmental issues so um please introduce yourself to let the listeners know exactly who they're listening to Sure. Um, I'm Amberly. Uh, right now, I'm an all support fellow. Um, I've been a paraprofessional for the past few years. I took a took a step back from the environmental fight. Um, it was just was very, weighing very heavily on me. Um, I'm currently campaigning for Claudia and Karina's 2024 um, election campaign, and um, I consider myself an advocate for environmental justice, intersectional feminism, and anti racism. Um, you know, there's so many ways to describe who I am, but I think that's a good place to, place to start. And your intersections are crazy, you know, like that, when you say it out like that, it makes you like, whoa, like, how does all of that intersect? Like, that could be a lot <laughs> for, you know, a, 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 a average listener. So when you say, you know, these are my intersections, talk to us a little bit about that. Hmm. Well, working in... I've worked in so many different spaces, um, kind of growing up sort of working class, like lower middle class has definitely affected my view on a lot of different things. Um, but 
I would say that like almost everything is kind of interconnected in a way. Um, it's difficult for me to map map it out sometimes even. Um, I'm a young woman, young uh, biracial woman uh, fighting for environmental justice and um, climate change action uh, from those who are in power because we can do everything on an individual scale, but um, if the system remains the same, then there's no way uh, that we're gonna see progress. So the people who hold the most power, the most wealth need, really need to be held accountable for um, the issues that we're facing, like everyone needs to be involved. It can't just be um, one person doing it all, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I know and I know you said that you stepped away, uh, but by being in the Alliance, how has that helped you as far as understanding what it means to be in the movement and the fight for, you know, climate change and environmental justice issues? Um, like how does being in the Alliance, can you repeat your question? I'm sorry. Like being a part of the Watershed Alliance, you know, doing the work that you're doing. Um, how has that helped you uh, when it comes to your stance and, and what you're doing in the movement? Yeah. So being a part of the Watershed Alliance has, I don't know, it's been pretty life-changing, I would say. Um, I was really interested in becoming a, f a fellow in the first place. We have um, a summer fellowship open um, each year uh, to our 23 environmental centers. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can go to watershedalliance.org. We're going to start accepting, like the centers are going to start accepting applications soon. Um, but I would, I would say it just really help, it helps ground me. Like I love water and like learning about the different waterways that need protecting um, and just the fact that we all really depend on water, um, clean water, healthy water uh, is definitely an, a way to think about like what I can do for the water in my area. Um, and it isn't just like protecting a natural resource. It's also building community around that resource or yeah. just building community in general, you know, um, just getting involved in like any way you're you're able to or have the capacity for. Um, and everyone's super supportive in the alliance. Um, I've my experience has been really wonderful. Um, and I'm hoping to continue growing within it um, and growing the different events coming up and things like that. No doubt. And one thing, Amberly, I want to mention too uh, that you said is that um, one of the reasons why you step back is because it became so heavy. The work became so heavy. Um, and I'm actually going to be bringing a journalist on in the month of March to talk about this, um, especially because it's Women's History Month. And I wanted to celebrate women in a, in a way in which I'm talking about women who are uh, boots on the ground doing the work, going from country to country, like really trying to hone in on environmental issues, right? Um, and she wrote a whole piece about the work that she was doing and how it was a burnout, um, her fighting for the rights of others, you know, she was starting to lose herself. Um, and it was just for the process of just having a stable environment to live in. Um, so when it comes down to, uh, the work that you're doing, what was the, what was the main burnout for you as far as, um, trying mm -hmm. to find the stability in, in doing the work? The main such a good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, the main burnout for me was focusing on just what I could do. My burnout stemmed from not leaning into community and not leaning into others to try and, you know, figure this out together. Like I was very, very much like so hyper fixated on like climate change and the impacts of it. Um, that I wasn't, uh, like, also, I wasn't looking at the solutions. I was just so focused on the impacts, what was happening, um, the suffering that was happening, and not looking at, like, well, how do we move forward? How do we get past this? Um, all the different, all the different barriers and things like that, um, in order to create a brighter future for everyone. Um, and so I was able to recover from my burnout, um, with therapy <laughs> <laughs> as you should yeah um but also just reframing my thinking um I'm here to have I'm here to have a good time I'm here to I'm here to also fight for what I believe in um and I think those two things go hand in hand so 
like I would say uh, for anyone listening, like it's so important to um, take care of yourself um, because that's when real change occurs. Um, you have to start with yourself. Um, and Ray was saying that too during our uh, the panel that you were part of um, last month. Mm -hmm. um, and so like three things that I would, I have been working towards is kind of telling my truth, sharing my story, um, decolonizing my thinking, um, because we do live in a, a system of colonization mm -hmm. and just creating community wherever you find yourself. Um, whatever that it, like I'm trying to build community around poetry right now and as well as environmental protection, um, watershed, stewardship. Um, and at, like it might not seem connected, but it it definitely is um, all these different things. I feel that um, because nature brings the creativity out of people. So I definitely understand what you mean by that. Um, but I also want to get into, because we got about 10 minutes left and I wanted to get into, you know, some of the work that you were doing, you know, when it comes down to the Alliance, you know, you were working to bring forth other fellows, uh, other fellows into the fellowship um, and bringing the next generation forward with understanding just the concept of coming into this fight or just coming into the world of environmental justice issues and climate change and all of those good, those, those good things as far as um, the actions that we want, the actionable items that we want behind it. Um, how How is it, you know, speaking and talking and working with the next generation of uh, climate fighters? It's been really great. Um, the enthusiasm from the younger generations kind of is part of the reason why I keep going. Um, they're ready to, you know, they're ready to fight and they're not taking no for an answer. Um, so yeah, it's it's been really wonderful. Um, I'm in the process of creating more community around like our fellowship and the alumni specifically. Um, so that's been a really fun process. Um, we actually have a couple of events. Um, well, one is related to um, the alumni, but it's open to the public. It's a fungi identification workshop. Um, it's coming yeah, up March, March. Yeah. <laughs> um, so March 4th, we're having that virtually from 530 to 7. I um, actually and, love that, though. Uh, I think it was 2000, if it's 2024, I want to say 2022, the Philadelphia Flower Show, who's actually coming up next behind you. Um, they actually had a whole fungi mushroom exhibit uh, in the uh, flower show that year when it was outside of FDR Park. And that's how I actually got to learn a little bit more about fungi. That's awesome. I encourage you to come to our workshop. Um, okay. It's being hosted by uh, Sam Buccirelli from the Philadelphia Mycology Club. They do a lot of uh, good work around fungi and foraging. Awesome. Um, so shout out to them too. Uh, and then we have a career fair event coming up, um, the Young Professionals Career Fair, uh, mainly for environmental careers, um, April 19th, um, probably either from 5.30 or 6 to 8 um, that day at the Discovery Center, actually. So. Um, if you want to stay informed, um, you can check out our website at watershedalliance.org for that. Um, or you can email me directly at amberly.choi at audubon.org, which is fine. You can totally reach out to me um, and I'll get you the information whenever it goes live. No doubt. Um, and Amberly, you know, when it comes down to uh, the city of Philadelphia, right, um, and you think about uh, what what I always say to even open up the show, you know, I want to bring forth a greener, safer Philadelphia. Um, do you think that's possible, you know, when it comes down to Philadelphia and what we have to offer with our environmental issues that we're dealing with on a daily basis, whether you're living in West Philadelphia and you're, you know, last last year we, we had a scare without water or you're living uh, around the Schuylkill River and you're scared, your, your homes are going to flood. Like, what do you think about the city of Philadelphia right now? I think it, that the potential is so like unlimited it's it's a beautiful city yes it, it has issues that need to be addressed but with you know I like to think and this is like a broader answer to a broader question of like is it possible is anything possible right um and I like to think about how without you know the optimism and the hope that if you don't have that in the first place, it's not going to be possible. So I go at it with, you know, you have to go at it with a fierce 
determination and hope that it is, you know, it is possible to have a safe and green Philadelphia, um, a safe green city anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, you know, it just takes. And the reason why I even say, you know, green and safe together is because statistically it proves that, you know, um, the cleaner your environment is, the the more uh, you have trees and green spaces and parks and recreation around you, it shows that, you know, the crime rate goes down. You know, people care a little bit more about the environment in which they live in. They care about the neighborhoods in which they live in. They want to protect them a little bit more because they see the beautification of the mall. So that's one of the reasons why I always blend those two conversations, greener and safer together. Um, and it's mm -hmm. crazy because um, our newly elected mayor, Madam um, Parker, she actually has a slogan about a green or safer Philadelphia as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I asked, do you believe that that statistic is true? Yeah, I mean, I haven't looked at it, but I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe what you're saying to me. So, But I'm just saying, just in general, do you feel based on, you know, just the idea or the concept that if a person lives in a cleaner, safer environment, that they actually care to protect their environment a little bit more and that brings forth the beautification? Um, I think it's not always possible to like get the resources like there has to be resources in order to plant trees and um beautif beautify things so if there isn't support from the government or from organizations who want to see um a greener safer philly then you know we kind of need things on both sides from top down and bottom up as well mm -hmm. um so i you know Philadelphians care about their city and as you know making their voices heard and um I guess I'll also be one of those voices once I live there um making sure that organizations the government local government state even federal knows that you know this is our place and we want it to look a certain way we want it to be green and beautiful and we want it to enhance our lives and not um like cause cause harm mm -hmm. um i definitely feel that and when it comes down to what you are being taught in the fellowship are they teaching policy uh, mm, i think so my experience was with just one of the out of the 23 centers mm -hmm. um i can only speak to that specific center um heritage conservancy who works with the bristol marsh um they work out of doylestown but they're um they have they're involved with the Bristol Marsh, um, doing cleanups and things like that. Um, as far as I know, I don't remember, it was in 2019, so it's kind of far back. Um, we didn't, I think we kind of were, we held like a meeting with um, different politicians at one point to talk about something related to the environment. Um, so it's like, it's in the work. Um, I don't know if other centers are more involved with policy. Okay. Um, but for example, we're doing something called Hill Day soon where we're going to um, DC to talk to politicians um, about protecting the Delaware River watershed um, and other environmental issues, I, I believe. So um, it def policy definitely has an involvement. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And that's one of the reasons why I asked is because I feel like in order to really get involved in these conversations, we do have to understand the policies around them so we can even talk about funding. Um, That's one of my biggest mm -hmm. issues when you talk about resources. That's one of my biggest issues um, here on EcoWord. And that's one of the things that I stress a lot. Um, It's not necessarily, you know, honing in on climate and, and trees and fresh air. It's about making sure that you don't become a product of your environment. You know, that's like that saying that says, don't be, I don't want to become a product of your environment. I'm like literally saying that. And I mean that because people, you know, uh, become product of their environments because they're now catching asthma. They become cancer patients, all of these things because they became literal mm -hmm. products of their environment. So, you know, I just want to make sure that we're putting forth a conversation that's for people and about people who, uh, who need, in my opinion, to understand that um, environmental justice issues is not just about grass and trees. And it's mm -hmm. very hard to get that out of people's minds sometimes when um, the forefront of the conversation is always about climate. I mean, I want to ask that to be my last question this morning, you know, when it comes down to, um, 
some of the conversations that me and you have had, we talked specifically about environmental justice issues and how these uh, issues have affected black and brown people, um, not just in America, but everywhere, right? Um, but when you think about the conversation and the funding being directed just specifically to climate change, you know, what's your thoughts on that? And not necessarily mm -hmm. being funneled down to the environmental justice that we do, the environmental justice issues that we deal with every day. Mm. What do you what do you mean it's being directed towards climate change but not so like when I say climate change I mean it's it's more or less you know talking about um uh the air quality or you know pollution and toxics and toxins and things of that nature yes I understand but it's not necessarily um being funneled down to education in schools who mm -hmm. still have lead um and and lead paint in their schools is not being funneled down to communities who literally have um uh, vacant lots and 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 dumping every day trash not being picked up it's not being funneled down to communities who don't have clean water you know mm -hmm. um it's not being funneled down to students who can't even drink water the water fountain within their school buildings because it's been sitting there since 1837 so like just the those kind of simple things, you know, so those are really, you know, some of the things I get excited about when I talk about environmental justice issues. Um, and I do understand that climate change is extremely huge conversation and we have those conversations here on Eco Word and we're going to continue to have those conversations but I just want to make sure that people who are fighting for grassroots issues are not getting left off the table too. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree um, with, with all of that and uh I would say kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about how to handle these issues is that the people making those funding decisions need, you know, need to include these grassroots, um, like the grassroots, um, I'm blanking on the word. Initiatives or issues. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, they have to look at that because like it, it's like more, um, like there was a study done, I forget when it was, I forget what year, um, but it basically outlined the fact that black and brown neighborhoods are more likely to live near um, like hazardous waste sites. Mm -hmm. Like who allowed this to happen? You know, I just, I just want to talk. Yes. <laughs> um, and going forward, you know, the, the design um, of our infrastructure and where communities are has kind of is exactly. like set in place so going forward we need to focus on those areas that need um need help most um, exactly. and facing the the highest amounts of pollution um yeah basically that because an analogy uh, I heard and I like to use is that like um like the fire department wouldn't go into a neighborhood and like put water on all the houses you put water on the house that is on fire mm -hmm. Um, and so it's similar in the situation with funding. Um, we need to put those resources into communities ha who have been divested in for so long. Um, like it's not, I, I hate when people are like, oh, that's just a bad neighborhood or that's just, um, you know, a dicey area. I'm like, if you look at the history, those same areas have been redlined and like exactly money has been refused to those areas mm -hmm. so you know what are we going to do to change that exactly we're going to continue to have conversations but we're going to put actionable items behind that conversation especially here on equal work you know we want to make sure that we're bringing forth a conversation that comes along with doing something about these issues. Um, so Amberly, I appreciate you coming forth this morning, you know, talking with us here on Eco Word, uh, giving us a little bit of insight of what you have going on. Um, and then also just sharing some story, you know, just sharing stories about, you know, someone who's in the fight of pushing forth for a safer, cleaner Philadelphia, but also making sure that, you know, we're, we're pushing forth for the next generation of environmental justice leaders as well. So thank you for the work that you're doing with the Watershed Alliance. Thank you for bringing me onto the panel last, uh, last month um, to talk about the work that we have going on here at WRD, um, making sure we're pushing forth uh, an environmental justice conversation for the next generation as well. Tell the people how they can find you, stay logged, share your email again if they want to reach out to you and also become a fellow as well. Yes, please become a fellow. Um, you have to be 18 by June 1st in order to become a fellow. Um, and my email, if you want to reach out to me for the um, Young Professionals Career Fair or anything else, um, it's amberly.choy at audubon.org. 
That's spelled A-M-B-E-R-L-Y dot C-H-O-I at Audubon dot org. Um, thank you so much, POC, for having me on. I it's appreciate been a real you. Pleasure. No doubt. Thank you so much for coming through. You already know what time it is, man. It's your girl, PLC. Every morning, we got a jam-packed show. Thank you for showing love. Thank you for showing support. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. 900 AM WRD, 96.1 Word Radio.